All right, folks. So what we have here is a new radio, or new to me. It's a Baofeng GT3TP, and the TP stands for triple power. What I want to do in this video is I want to unbox this, take a look at what it ships with. We're going to do some uh, range testing, some audio testing, and then uh, we're actually going to hook this up to a power meter and test the watt outputage. Anyhow, if that sounds like something you want to watch, go ahead and stay tuned. So before we get started, I did want to say that I was contacted by the fine folks at Radio Oddity. They asked if they could send me this radio for testing, evaluation, and review purposes. And of course I said yes. They also were good enough to include their new PC001 FTDI cable. Use this cable to program your radio. In this video, we are going to show programming the radio with a program called Chirp. So I'm glad I've got it. Anyhow, you can see that this radio is a collaboration between Balfang and Sane Sonic. I think Sane Sonic made the antenna or manufactured the antenna and potentially some of the components inside the radio, but I'm not sure about that part. Taking a look inside the box, we can see it ships with a user manual. The user manual is pretty good uh, compared to other Chinese radios that I've reviewed in the past. Here you can see the 3TP itself. The radio is powered by a 7.4 volt 1800 milliamp hour battery. It's 13.32 watts and the model number is BL-5. Digging further into the box, we'll see what else this radio ships with. Here you can see some of the other goodies that ship with the radio. The first thing I notice is a charging station and a 12 volt adapter that will allow you to charge the radio through the charging station, through a cigarette port in your car, or maybe in a go box that you've built. The radio is charged off of 10 volts, so do not make a mistake and plug a 12 volt adapter directly in. You'll need something that steps down a 12 volt power source to a 10 volt. Here's the pocket clip, which screws onto the back of the radio via two Phillips screws. I don't always use pocket clips, but I'm glad they sent it. They also sent this earpiece and mic. I generally don't use these, but again, it's nice to have in the event that I want to. Here's the power adapter. And again, you can see that it has 10 volt. Please don't make a mistake and hook up to a 12 volt. You could overheat your charging station and have some problems. It also comes with a lanyard. Generally speaking, I don't use lanyards, but I know a lot of folks do. So again, this is a nice to have. Here's the same Sonic antenna. The antenna works on 70 centimeters and 2 meters. It's very flexible. On the inside of the radio, you can see that there is an FCC ID, 2AJGM-UV5R. We'll look a little bit more into that. Let's go ahead and connect the battery to the radio. The battery easily clips onto the back of the radio, and it feels quite comfortable in the hand. Let's go ahead and attach the antenna. But note, it has an SMA male connector on the radio, which means the pin is attached to the radio. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I'd prefer the pin to be on the antenna in the event that you bend or break the pin. It's a lot easier to replace the antenna than it is the radio. So powering up the radio, we can see that it is programmed or comes shipped with some default frequencies. We're going to go ahead and remove these because I don't believe they're appropriate for the American or the U.S. amateur band plan. It's also a good idea to make sure that this battery is fully charged before use. So we are going to charge it up before we do any testing. The radio has all the accessories that you would expect from Baofeng these days. On the left side you have a call, a PTT button, and a monitor button. The power and volume knob has a silver coating on it, which I feel might get scratched up after a bit of use. When the radio is on, you can use the monitor button to turn the flashlight on. It has a VFO memory mode button that allows you to toggle between the two. It also has an AB button allowing you to switch between the two different I guess you'll call them channels. Also, it has a band button to allow you to switch from UHF to VHF and a menu button to access the menu features. I wanted to take a few moments to show the Radio Oddity website. From the menu at the top, select Analog, and then you can go down and select Balfang, and you can browse to the 3TP radio. It ships in a couple of different configurations. You can get the radio, you can get a dual pack, you can get a pack with accessories, or even one with an extended battery. 
you can see the radio sells for about $34.99. I'm going to go ahead and click view where we can browse some of the features. As mentioned, it's a dual band radio, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, with three power settings. Here again, you can see the FCC ID I referenced earlier. The power settings are supposed to be 1 watt, 4 watts, and 8 watts. While I was browsing the Radio Oddity website, I actually got a pop-up for a $10 off coupon. So that would put this radio at around $25 bucks if you decided to order, which is pretty good. If you want to see more of the specifications, go ahead and check out the site. From the top menu, I can go to Accessories and browse to the cable that was sent to me. Again, I want to mention that it uses the FTDI chipset, which is the correct chipset. It's not one of the knockoff prolifics. The cable shouldn't require the installation of a driver, and it works on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. The website also features what they call accreditations from the FCC for the radios that they sell. Click on that image, browse to Balfang, and then click on 3TP, and then you can see the letter from the FCC. Here you can see the radio was granted Part 15 certification in 2018. I would prefer if it had a Part 90 certification, but because it's Part 15, which I think has more to do with emissions than use, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict the transmission frequencies on this radio using Chirp, and we're going to do that now. We're going to plug the programming cable into the speaker mic jack on the right-hand side of the radio. Once that's done, we're going to plug the USB side of the programming cable into our laptop. Make sure the radio is off when you do this. Using a program called Chirp, I want to first read the stock configuration from the radio. So from the menu, I select Radio, and then select Read from Radio, and I get a dialog box. Here, I want to make sure that I'm using the right COM port. So what I can do is I can go ahead and I can check, using Device Manager, my COM port settings. Once the window loads, I'll go down to COM port LPT. When I click that, I'll see that I have two ports configured, COM1 and COM7. COM7 is set to my USB serial port. So now, from the Chirp program, I know to select COM7. From the vendor, I want to select Balfang. Now, there is no setting for model 3TP, so I'm going to use the Balfang HP setting. Then I click OK. I'm presented with a warning box saying that this could potentially damage my radio and make it unusable. But I like to live dangerously, so I go ahead and I click Yes. Now here are the instructions for preparing your radio for the transfer. It tells you to turn the radio on, adjust the volume, and make sure that you're on a frequency where there is no transmission. Once you do this, the cloning process begins. The LED on the front panel of the radio will turn red and blink rapidly. Once the cloning process is complete, I'll be able to browse the configuration of the radio. The first thing that I want to do is go ahead and delete any frequencies or channels that have been programmed into the radio. This process is done from the Memories tab. What I'm going to do is highlight all the frequencies programmed into the radio, right click and then select Delete. When I do this, I'm going to shift the Memories up. Once I do this, you can see that the frequencies are deleted from the configuration. The next thing we're going to do, oops, looks like I missed one. Let me go ahead and delete this one. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add some of our own frequencies. With Chirp, it's pretty easy to do. Just go up to radio, and then what I use is import from stock config, and I have a set of options here. The first thing I'm going to do is pull in the NOAA frequencies because I like to monitor them and listen to weather reports. I just go ahead and I select all, I hit OK, and then you'll see the frequencies populate the data table. I'm going to go back up to stock configuration because I want to import some other frequencies. 
In this case, I want to program the US calling frequencies. Only two are selected because they're appropriate for this radio. At the bottom, I can adjust the location of the memory channels where these frequencies are programmed. So I just hit Add 10, and it's going to put them in 12 and 14. I go ahead and I click OK, and now those frequencies are programmed. I'm also going to import the FRS and GMRS frequencies into their own channels. I do this because I like to monitor them for activity. But don't worry, we're going to configure the radio so it cannot transmit on any of the FRS, GMRS frequencies or any of the NOAA frequencies. Last, I just want to show a quick way that you can import local repeater information. So again, I go to, to, I go to radio and then I go query data source and this time I pick repeater book. And I can type in information here like New York. I can put in a distance. In this case we're going to use 25 miles. And then I just pick 2 meters to make it quick. I get a tab with a separate data table that has the 2 meter frequencies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all of these and then I'm going to copy them, and then I'm going to go back to my Balfang tab, and I'm going to go ahead and pick an empty channel, right click and pick paste. And there you go. We have all the frequencies that we want for our radio. The next thing to do is to set the configuration so we can't transmit on non-amateur radio spectrum bands or ARS bands. This is done by going back to the settings tab and then picking other settings. Now what we want to do is we want to go down to the VHF and UHF settings. We want to set the VHF lower limit to 144 and the upper limit to 148. For UHF we want to set it from 420 to 450. The last thing I want to do is I want to go back up to basic settings and I want to change my display modes to name. I do this because it makes it a little bit easier than memorizing frequencies or channel numbers. Once that's done, we're going to write our configuration back to the radio. So from the main menu, we click radio, and then we pick upload to radio. We get our configuration screen, click OK. We get the instructions to make sure that our radio is turned on. We click OK there. We get the warning, just like last time. We click yes, and then the cloning process begins. The LED light on the front panel of the 3TP will now blink green rapidly. Once this is done, we power off our radio and disconnect everything. What I want to do now is I want to measure the power output. So I've connected the radio to a watt and SWR meter. This one's from Nisei. It's for measuring UHF and VHF. I have the meter going into an MFJ dummy load. And what this does is make sure that any transmissions that I make here actually don't broadcast. As I go through the process, I start out on the 2 meter band and move down menu. to the 70 centimeter band. I need to go into the menu. Menu option 2 will allow me to adjust power. my power settings. As I go through these, on low, I get 1, a little bit higher than 1 watt output on 2 meter, 5 for medium, and 6 for high. Keep in mind the radio is rated at 1, 4, and 8. For 70 centimeters, I get 2 watts on the lowest setting, a little bit higher than 5 on the medium, and then on high I get about 7.5. So what you can see here from the keypad, based off the restriction we put in place in our upper and lower limits for UHF and VHF, I cannot type in frequencies that are outside the ARS or amateur radio spectrum bands. These restrictions will persist through a factory reset. Four, five, zero, zero, I am also prohibited zero, from TXing or transmission on any frequencies that were programmed into any of the memory slots or channels. This is pretty handy in making sure that your radio will not accidentally transmit out of amateur radio spectrum. Using the iLoons HD1 dual band handheld radio, we will test send and receive signals at one kilometer.
Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing the three TP. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing the three TP. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Overall, I can say that I'm pretty happy with the performance of the Balfang GT3TP radio. It's got a great form factor, it's lightweight, and it performs pretty well. Anyhow, what I'd like to say is a big thank you to Radio Oddity for sending me this radio for testing evaluation purposes, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you want to see more content of a similar nature, go ahead and like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks everybody, I really appreciate it.